Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to show you guys how to soft mod your PS Vita. I recently picked up one for my son with the intent to hack or modify it. I've been modding my systems now dating back to the PlayStation 1 and Dreamcast days. So I was surprised to find that the newer exploits for this system are quite easy to complete in your own home. There's no mod chip or soldering required thankfully. Now the goal here is to get the system loaded up with lots of homebrew applications like emulators so uh, my son can have a better library of games at his disposal. Being an old school game fan, I'm always trying to promote that stuff to my children. It's, it's a fun thing to have in common. Now I have the PS Vita 1000. Keep in mind in this tutorial, it will differ depending on whether you have the 1000 or 2000 model. To quickly tell which version you have, simply look at the speaker ports on the face of your unit. If the holes are in the shape of a rectangle, you have the 1000. The 2000 units are in the shape of a circle. Now the 1000s require an extra step, but I would say it's worth it for the upgraded OLED screen alone. This system really is beautiful, it's a shame that it failed. Okay, let's get moving. Before starting this guide, make sure you are on a stable Wi-Fi connection and that your Vita is connected and charging at all times before continuing. If the power were to be interrupted during the process, there is always a chance of turning your PSP into a pretty, albeit useless brick. The first thing we need to do is update our firmware to the latest version. As of September 2023, that is version 3.74. In order to do this, we need to enter our Vita settings menu and scroll down to System, then System Information. From here, you can confirm that you are on the required 3.74 firmware. If not, please upgrade to your Vita before starting this mod. Next, open up your browser on your PS Vita and go to the website https jailbreak.psp2.dev. That is https jailbreak. Dot PSP2 dot dev. You'll be brought to this Hemlock site where you are asked if you would like to unlock your PS Vita to run on official games and applications. If you need to know a little bit more, Henlo is a WebKit and kernel exploit chain for all PS Vita firmwares. So this is a web-based exploit. As I was saying, you'll be brought to this Henlo website where you are asked if you would like to unlock the PS Vita to run on official games and applications. Tap on Unlock My Vita, and then tap Unlock again to begin the process. You are then taken to this Henlo bootstrap menu. If you have the Vita 2000, you can take one less step and install Henkaku, but if you have the PS Vita 1000 as I do as well, you need to follow a few more steps. So click on Replace Near with Vita Deploy. It will prompt you with this warning asking you if you would like to continue. To do so, press the square button and start the install. Your system will reboot. Once back on, tap to your browser and return to the website jailbreak.psp2.dev once more. Once back on this menu, we can follow along as if we had the PS Vita 2000 and install Hankaku. Doing so only takes a moment. Once that is complete, click on Exit and go back to your home screen. From there, enter your Vita settings and you will be able to access a separate Nkaku settings menu. Open this menu up and make sure to enable the checkbox Enable Unsafe Homebrew. Exit out of this setting and return to the home screen and open up your freshly installed Vita Deploy application. From here, we are going to create an internal storage for your PS Vita. So from this menu, go to miscellaneous. From here, we'll set up our PS Vita's internal storage. To make this happen, we need to, need to create an internal or virtual memory card. So tap miscellaneous, scroll down, and then hit create an internal memory card. When here, you'll be prompted to acknowledge that you understand that if something were to happen during this stage, you may permanently brick your system. Hit continue. Scroll down to the default to triple X storage configuration. Tap 
tap X and then any key to reboot. Once rebooted, enter settings and you will find your new one gig internal storage that you created. Once again, reboot and enter settings and you will find that new one gig internal storage that you created. We are going to format that partition next. So scroll down, tap format, and then format memory card. From here you can see both the removable memory card as well as the internal memory card that we just created. Uncheck the removable memory card and make sure that the only internal memory card option is selected. Then tap next, and finally format. Then tap yes once more. Then tap yes once more. Your PS Vita will reboot again. And once that happens, launch your browser for a third time and return to the bootstrap menu. From here on out, PSP 1000 and 2000 users will forever be on the same steps. So it's time to utilize that internal storage that we generated and install Vita Deploy. So once you get here, select Vita Deploy and it will install. Once the screen says all done, you can return to the home screen. Enter your settings again, where you can go into the Hankaku settings and double check that you have enabled unsafe homebrew checked. Once you've done this, return to the home screen and scroll to the new Vita Deploy application and open it up. Now it's time to downgrade our firmware from 3.74 to 3.65 where the exploit lies. From here, click Install Different OS and then tap Quick 3.65 Install. This will take a moment to download and prep the OS for rollback. You will see a prompt message asking if you really want to downgrade from firmware 3.74. You can press X to confirm or R to exit. Press X to confirm. You have to wait 20 seconds before you can press X. You will reboot again. Head back into Settings, and then scroll down to System, and then System Information. From here, you can see that you have successfully downgraded your OS from 3.74 to 3.65. Next, we need to turn off Auto Firmware Updates. This is very important that you do this because you do not want your firmware to update and then uh, revert back to an OS version above 3.65. To do this, simply tap on Settings and uncheck the box stated Download update file for system software. After this, back out and head into the Henkaku settings and make sure all three of the top boxes are checked. After confirming this, scroll down and click Spoofed Version. This is to tell the network services that we are using version 3.74, even though we are not. So edit this text field and make sure it says 3.74. After you've done that, we need to enable the PS Store on our custom firmware. So return to Vita Deploy and install ITLS Installer. Enter Vita Deploy and then App Downloader and select ITLS Installer. Scroll back up and then, and then click Download Selected Apps. Once the install completes, exit out of the installer to find a new app on your home screen called ITLS Installer. From inside here, click on the Install the Full ITLS Package. After a few moments, the device will reboot for a fourth time. This ITLS package ensures that we can still use the PlayStation Store to make purchases if we would like to. Next, it's time to move on to the Game Changer. This simple $5 SD Vita Pro adapter lets you put your PS Vita apps onto micro SD. Otherwise, you're stuck using Sony's very own proprietary and very expensive card. This means you can put your entire PSP and Vita collection on this SD card. With the, the adapter, of course. If you need help dumping your collection to SD card, that will be another tutorial I can make in the future. You can find a link to this adapter card in the description. So, with the SD to Vita Pro adapter and SD card inserted, 
scroll down to miscellaneous, and then tap on format storage device. Make sure the target says SD to Vita and the file system says text fat. Now tap format target storage. After it says formatted, click OK and back out. From here, we want to tap on mount SD Vita to GRW0. Once that's mounted, we'll get a few more applications. Back out and go into the app downloader and scroll down and select YAMT YAMT installer. Select the application to install. Scroll back up, hit download selected apps. Once this step completes, back out of the installer and find the newly downloaded application and install YAMT. From here, click on install light version and then your system will reboot for a fifth time. After the reboot, go into settings and then click on devices and then storage devices. From here, we want to select the checkbox use YAMT. Also, make sure that UX0 is set to default and UMA0 is set to SD to Vita. From here, we want to do a hard reset. So hold the power button until you get the option to power off and do so. After rebooting, open up the Vita Deploy app. From here, we can install an app called Vita Shell. Vita Shell acts as a file browser, and in this case, we need to use it to move some files around inside your PS Vita. After installing, open up Vita Shell and follow along once more. Open up the UXO folder and press X. Scroll down and highlight any one of the folders and then press triangle. Then select mark all. Press triangle again and then select copy. Back out by pressing circle. And then go to the UMA0 folder. Once in here, go down to the only available folder. Tap triangle and then choose to paste all of the previously copied files here. After that, return to the home screen and open up your settings menu again. Go to devices and then storage devices. Tap on UX0 and change it from default to SD2 Vita instead. After that, scroll down and change UMA0 from SD to Vita to memory card. Once completed, tap on your power button and reboot your device again. After rebooting, go into settings, then system, then system information. Doing this to confirm that we have more memory than before. Good news, you're almost done. Now you have all the space in the world for those amazing homebrew softwares. Return to Vita Deploy one final time and grab as many apps as you would like, but I will also recommend some as well. Go into the app downloader and get the Vita DB downloader. This is a big one. It's like a homebrew store where you can access a lot of cool applications, such as all of those emulators required to run your old ROM files. There is also an application called Adrenaline, which turns your Vita into a full-fledged PSP via emulation. It's a very well done app. There's also an application on here called PKGJ, which I do not recommend, as it enables you to gain access to the entire PSP and Vita library. Most countries would consider this piracy, and for that reason, I do hope it is removed and destroyed as quickly as possible. Remember, you should only download things you have already purchased and have the receipt for. And then you have a nifty custom themes manager, which I have yet to play with. You can select these all at once, scroll up, hit download, where they will all download and install automatically. Well, that's it. 
I hope you're up and running. The first thing I did was install Castlevania via PlayStation emulator. Let me know what you plan on doing in the comments and if this tutorial worked well for you. If you have any other questions at all, please ask away and I'll do my best to try and help out. Thank you and have a good night.